Just the other week, League of Legends dropped Swarm, a brand new game type completely different from ARAM or TFT or any of their other games. It's a lot of more fast paced, it's very frantic, it kind of feels like Diablo meets a roguelike, and it's really fun, but there's a couple of intricacies in there that you might have missed on your first playthrough. So let's jump into the top 10 tips that you need to know to become a Swarm Pro. First and foremost, play every new champ. A lot of the abilities and a lot of the upgrades are locked behind playing through that first champ all the way through level 30. But you can still have a great playthrough, and if you're playing with a team, you should be able to get carried through it. Playing through every champion is crucial as unlocking these abilities gets you new weapons, new skills, and new builds that are way more viable than the ones you get at the beginning. So don't be shy. Try new champs. They're really fun. All of them are pretty viable, although some are better than others. Tip number two, you gotta build for synergies and evos. Certain items work really well together, and certain items kind of fall flat. Not only that, but your champ is always gonna have a base ability that evos based on a certain ability. For example, Yasuo builds off of crit, so if you build a complete crit build with Yasuo, just having that one skill at the beginning gives you a lot of diversity and a lot of options to pick from, especially with weapons and different augments that you can pick up throughout the game. Every single item needs a different ability to push it to that evo, so make sure you're keeping track of the abilities that you need to find, especially if you're building weapons first. Tip number three is you've got to learn the maps. Each map has a different strength, a different weakness, a different ability, and as you progress through that storyline, every map gets harder than the last. Starting with the base map, you get a bunch of XP at the beginning just given to you, and you get some pretty low-level mobs thrown your way at the beginning. From there, you don't have a ton of diversity in there, it's a pretty open map, and there's not a lot going your way or going against you. When you get to some of the later maps, there's tight borders, there's advantageous areas, there's even things that are going to help you take out enemies at a much higher rate, especially at those early levels. Learning the maps can easily be the difference between you dying over and over and over again on higher difficulty attempts and having smooth sailing runs. So don't be afraid to explore, get out there, check out the nooks, see what's going on, and find the spaces that work for you in each map. Tip number four is all about finding fortune. Miss Fortune always has her little shrines on every map. These little gold things that you can see here. Now they might seem like they're easy to find, but you can easily miss these if you're moving quickly or if you're just staying stationary like you will with some champions like Leona. To easily find these fortune shrines, just look for the gold on your map. It's easier at lower levels, although it's much harder when there's many mobs on the ground, but just look for the gold, follow the gold particles and all of the gold coloration, and you'll easily find fortune. You can even find her through walls a lot of the time. She gives you some of the most advantageous upgrades in the game, some of them making you invulnerable for long periods of time, others just kind of give you a lot of status effects that can really build up and help you. So make sure you're grabbing these as much as possible because they're going to make your run way easier. Tip number five is all about Evo cards. Evo cards are the blue cards that drop from mini bosses and sub bosses throughout your run. Early game, these cards are just going to give you a flat upgrade. Late game, if you've built correctly, these cards are going to give you an Evo on your best weapon. I've played with people that like to hoard the Evo cards for the very end so that when they're ready to go, you can just quickly Evo your items. For me, until you get one of your weapons to like level 4, it's not really worth saving them. So farm them up early game, hold on to them later game because you're going to need them to Evo your items as quickly as possible. Evoing your items is the best way to make sure that you're as powerful as possible and some of these Evos are game breakers. So make sure you're using your Evo cards wisely, take advantage of the timing, and if you're getting up to 13 or 14 minutes long until your run, have them as soon as possible. Tip number six is to pay attention to quest unlock items and abilities. Every quest that you see in your little mini bar at the bottom is going to have a specific reward or a specific benefit for completing. Although many of these quests just give you a couple hundred to a couple thousand gold, some of them are directly tied to some of the most powerful abilities in the game, especially some of those misfortune shrines. Some of the abilities that you unlock through the quests are way better than the beginning ones. So make sure you're taking the time to go over your quests, take over the ones that are a little bit more difficult, and actually progress through those quest lines. Tip number seven kind of goes along the same lines, which is pay attention to story quests. Story quests are kind of hidden way deep down in your quest line markers, and they're easy to miss, really. Some of them are definitely bugged, so don't be upset 
if you can't get through them. If you notice that you are trying to do a story quest and it's not triggering and you're doing it again and again, I got around this issue by going into the rando lobby and just taking care of this. It didn't work for me when I was playing with my friends. You actually have to go in and play through their like random system, which is fine, right? Like kind of get to feel the actual gameplay and how people are playing it a little differently. I wish that these bugs weren't there, but they are. So make sure that if you are doing these story quests, that you're actively checking them off and that you're kind of troubleshooting as you go because some of them are definitely bugged. Tip number eight is to remap your controls to fit your needs. In this game mode, you really have seven buttons. You've got your WASD and you've got an E and an R. That's it. You can move around, you can cast your abilities, and for most people that's going to work fine. But just keep in mind that means that you only have one hand that's active and you've got your mouse for aiming. So if you press C and do auto lock, you don't even really have to move your mouse all that much. If you're comfortable with your left hand doing basically all of the work, then that's great for you. I know a lot of people that have preferred to map their E and their R over to their right and left mouse buttons accordingly. This seems to work for a lot of people. If you don't mind the initial layout and you've already learned it and you feel really comfortable with it, you don't need to relearn a new control scheme. That's just a control scheme that I've seen work well for a lot of people in a lot of games. So don't be afraid to mess around and see what controls work for you as having your E and R bound right next to your WASD is kind of clunky, I have to admit it. Tip number nine is all about which things to buy first with your group. Gold is the main currency in this game mode, and it's going to be what gets you to the next level consistently after every game that you play. Once you complete quests and unlock a bunch of different story things, you're going to get access to a whole suite of upgrades, ranging from crit chance to max health to damage, and most importantly, gold. Buy gold first as soon as you possibly can. It's going to streamline your entire process from start to finish. The more gold you get from every game, the less games you have to play to get to max level. Now keep in mind that you're still going to have to play quite a few games to get to Anima 100, but you can definitely short track that system by going ahead and buying gold first. I know a lot of people like to build XP after that point. I think that's personal preference. And if you find that you're doing a specific champ a lot, make sure you're buying those things that are going to be beneficial to them. For example, if you're loving Yasuo, buy more crit, buy more damage. If you're loving Leona, think about maybe some max health and some tank items like armor. But you need to build gold first in order to make the most of every game that you're playing consistently. So buy gold first. Just do it. It's a no-brainer. Finally, tip number 10 is to break the boxes that you find around the maps. Every map has these little boxes kind of scattered around. And although most of them don't have anything particularly valuable in them, some of them have something great in them. You have a chance of finding one of three items in them gold a pretty good amount usually between 20 and 30 gold a health recharge which gives you a little bit of a boost health which is great in those difficult times when you're kind of just running for mobs and finally you can get one of these rainbow orbs these things are clutch because if you don't know the only way to get xp in this game is by actively picking up the little blue purple and gold orbs that drop along your path of destruction and if you're playing a champ that's either squishy or doesn't move a lot, you're not going to pick up many of these things. These little rainbow orbs will drag every piece of gold and every piece of XP all across the map directly to you. There's an augment that you can get to make this happen to you every minute that you're playing, but these little balls are free and they're just all over the map. On average, I would say if I'm breaking boxes consistently, I'm going to get between two and four of them per game. So don't sleep on the boxes, especially since if you are actively breaking these boxes across your entire run, you could be adding hundreds to maybe even a thousand gold per run to your total. So make sure you're breaking the boxes and you're taking your time across your run to gather up the resources. Swarm has been an amazing game to play so far, and it's gotten a lot more depth to it than I was expecting. I've loved TFT and ARAM and all the League of Legends game modes that they've been coming out with, but this is a completely different feel to it. If you like Diablo, or roguelikes or any games like that or bullet hells or anything like that you're gonna love this game and i've been loving a ton of the features they've added into it it's got very different tweaks to it that i feel like makes it very unique and very fun it's not just a reskin with the league of legends champions in it it's a completely different game if you want to play this game and you want to stay up to date make sure you hit me with a like and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video peace Getting up to mischief Don't wait cause I'm coming in hot
Als sie zum Biscuit, Salzgeld, Korias, Korias, Möschke.